Please, my friends, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may our Lord be with you. As is our Lenten custom, we kneel for the Kyrie. pray. Grant Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, we may grow in understanding the riches hidden in Jesus Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A first reading, a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man who he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from the tree in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, you may eat all the fruit of the trees in the garden it is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said. You shall not eat it or even touch it lest you die. 
But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's. You know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it, and she gave it some of it to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then their eyes were both opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewn fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all men inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin. After the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? 
and the gift is not like the result of the one who sinned. For after one sin, there was the judgment that brought condemnation, but the gift, after many transgressions, brought acquittal. For if, by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the obedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. That time Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, it's written, one does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. So the devil took him to the holy city, made him stand in the parapet of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. It's written, he will command his angels concerning you. With their hands, they will support you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answered again, it's written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their magnificence, and he said, all these I shall give you if you prostrate yourself and worship me. At this Jesus said, get away, Satan. It's written, the Lord your God shall you worship, him alone shall you serve. The devil left him. Behold, angels came and ministered to him. The gospel of the Lord. I, I think we all know that in any good story, there's the, the good and the evil, the protagonist and the antagonist. And in, in our story, Jesus is the good guy and the devil is the bad guy. What's funny is we don't often get stories specifically about the devil and temptation. On the first Sunday of Lent, you always get the story of the temptations. Otherwise, you don't hear that much about the devil. It's the way they give it to us. And so that makes today a very important day to understand temptation and our ability to fight off temptation. This is a very important homily. How is it that Adam and Eve, who are in the garden, they are walking, talking, and living with God, they have everything, and they fall flat on their face with one temptation? But what? Just one. Jesus is in the desert where there is no food and water. He has nothing. Nothing. And he completely and perfectly resists the devil. Why do they fail when they have everything and he succeeds when he has nothing? 
should be making you pay attention to that. Let's understand how temptation works. The more you have, the more easily you fall. The more full, that's why pride is the source of all sin. The more you have, the more you fall. Okay? The Titanic left England as an unsinkable ship with no lifeboats because it was the greatest ship in the world. It can't sink. So they just put a couple, two, three lifeboats because there's no need for it. Warnings about icebergs, icebergs in the area from six other ships completely ignored. And just after midnight on April 15, 1912, they hit the iceberg and hundreds died. Because when you're the Titanic, you think you're above temptation. You're full of yourself. So you can't fall or fail. In my lifetime, two of the presidents, I don't know how many presidents have we had in my, I don't know, ten, ten presidents maybe have been alive in my lifetime. One got involved with the movie star and the other with an intern. And they're the president of the United States. But the more full you are, the more likely you are to fall, and you fall far. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve. Jesus, by contrast, is completely empty. No water, no food. But he succeeds. We ask you, I don't ask you, Mother Church asks you to fast and pray, give money to the poor, different things in the back of the church. When you give away... When you empty, as Jesus was in the desert, that's when you succeed. The empty person sees things that the full person doesn't. Recently had to visit somebody down to jail. Okay? Nobody likes going to the jail. And a guy's not, not just a prisoner, but a friend of mine. Okay? Not, not only is he incarcerated, he's embarrassed. Okay, a morals kind of thing, you know? And I don't like going to see that person because I know them, okay? But he said to me, now I'll get the help I need. He's, I think he's known he's needed it for a long time. Kept it hidden. But it ain't hidden anymore. But now that he's humiliated, embarrassed, I'm going to go home and stop the McDonald's on Wayne Avenue. He, he ain't going to McDonald's. He ain't getting out for a while. But when you're down, that's when you see things differently. You go to visit the guy in the hospital. Father, you got 10 minutes? I don't get to church too often. He's thinking he might die. And he better get this right. See, see what happens when you're down? You're different than when you're up. And the person who is down, spiritually down, not necessarily physically, you see how empty the temptation really is. Like the empty person who stuck, the guy who stuck on pornography, if he has spiritual emptiness, realizes that that woman in the magazine is empty. He's never going to have her. Guys like me marry the average woman. We don't marry movie stars and beauty queens. He's never going to have her. She's empty. That, that's an illusion. But only the person who has some emptiness, some spiritual emptiness, asking God to fill them, sees that. See how that works? The full person thinks that he's going to have her. He's never going to have her. But only the empty person sees that. And then the person who's really spiritually empty realizes that the needs that you need to have filled can only be filled by Jesus. The really important things can only be filled by him. And then he can dismiss temptation. See how that works? The full person, the proud, can't happen to me. Yes, it can. It does. It does. The empty person is better. That's why humility is so important. Pride, so scary. And then ultimately, the deep spiritual person realizes it's easier to stay out of temptation than to get out of temptation. Because once it snarls you, 
It's hard to get out of the tent. The, the devil knows exactly what he's doing. That's why he's on page one of the Bible. What's the temptation that you face that in emptiness of Lent, giving up eating less, do, that you can conquer? What's your temptation? I bet the devil knows. Do you? Let us stand, my friends, and we'll profess our faith in Almighty God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, to God from to God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Amen. We put our needs, hopes, and prayers before the Lord. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Bambera, and all bishops, may they lead the church to a deeper faith in God and a stronger love for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For local, national, and world leaders, may God grant them the wisdom to make decisions for the good of the community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may we walk through this season of Lent intentionally, giving glory to God through our fasting, almsgiving, and prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders in our military and those doing dangerous jobs, May the Holy Spirit guide them and protect them daily. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their caregivers who see God's face in one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Nikki Stelmack, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they be with Jesus in heaven forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us send the petitions by praying the vision prayer. Jesus, we are your people. We praise you as Savior and Lord. Deepen our commitment to you, your church, and each other. Let us all share more actively in spreading the good news of God present among us. Help us reach out to those who have not yet experienced joy of participating in parish life. Inspire us to seek justice and peace for all members of our parish family and beyond. Assist us in living your gospel of compassion and love and service to those in need. Mindful of our many blessings, we are especially grateful for your gift of our parish family, family dedicated to Mary, Mother of God, spouse Joseph, and our beloved saints, Anthony, Vincent, Stanislaus, Stephen. Lord, send us your spirit. Make us alive as we have never been. Let us celebrate together and place our hope in you. Amen. As the altar is prepared and our gifts are given, please join in singing, Gracious God, number 135 in Breaking Bread, number 135. See your 
friends that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Give us right dispositions Lord we pray to make these offerings for with them we celebrate the beginning of the sacred time Lent. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards. Through Christ, the angels praise you, dominions adore, powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship you. May our voices blend with theirs in a triumphant hymn of praise. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, with supper ended, he took a chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. Blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Do amen with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, For the the kingdom power, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of Christ's peace. sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
communion hymn is, There is a Longing, number 405 in Breaking Bread, number 405. Now, if you are really attentive and notice little details, you notice that underneath each of the 14 stations of the cross, we now have the number for that station. I believe they were removed when the church was painted in 93 or something like that, and they just never made a reappearance. So, I mean, we all should know the numbers of the stations. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. But... You know, if a station grabbed your attention, maybe after Mass, in the grace of the Eucharist, focus on that one station. Stay with it for 10 minutes, whatever. But it's nice to have the numbers. It'll help the kids learn the stations even better. Of course, we wanted it now for Lent, as we do on Fridays, the Stations of the Cross. So a big thank you to the people who put that together. Let us all stand to pray. Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, charity strengthened. We pray, Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true living bread, 
and strive to live by every word that comes from your mouth. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Lord, be with you. Mighty God bless us, our families, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Our liturgy ends, we go in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God.